Hello everyone, I'm Michael Anthony and welcome to my talk, Accessibility as Social Justice. I am a white male wearing glasses with blue frames, a black shirt, as well as a black and gray jacket. I will say that the, the bulk of my content and the PowerPoint slides that I will be showing are largely text and those are all talking points that I will be speaking through. There are a few images throughout the PowerPoint presentation as well and I will be describing those images where relevant as If you're looking to get a hold of me outside of this, you can find me on a variety of social platforms. Um, on the platform formerly known as Twitter, you can find me at, at JetUser and on BlueSky at JetUser.BlueSky.Social um, and everywhere else is probably still JetUser, which makes it a lot easier to find me. Uh, before we get too far, um, I want to recognize that this presentation was developed while residing on unceded indigenous land of uh, the Coast Salish people, the Pacific Northwest. And I also acknowledge that I have privileges that may have been used in developing and giving this presentation. My commentary is from my experience and there are some notes here that I have received from other people. Uh, there are many people that need to be involved in the discussions around social justice and I will not presume to speak for everybody. This is also an extremely complex and nuanced topic and only so much can be covered in 30 minutes so I might have to gloss over a few things. I also want to give special thanks to a few individuals who helped me develop this presentation. Um, it's not without their assistance that I will be able to bring this talk to you today. Patty Wang, Shell Little, Sailor. Now, a lot of terms tend to get thrown out there in the conversation around social justice, uh, but here's a quick primer on how to distinguish that. Um, there is an image that is divided into four quadrants. Um, it is probably flawed in one way or another, but it provides a good basis to understand what justice means. Um, at least from the lens of accessibility in this particular case. Um, in the top left quadrant, uh, inequality is in bold black text. There is a subtitle that says, unequal access to opportunities. Now, the image that I'm going to describe will be very similar to the next three images that I would describe in sequence, but it's important to keep the base image in mind um, because it will become relevant. I'll call out the key changes as we go through these different terms. There is a big tree that is leaning slightly to the left at the top. Um, it has full foliage on the left half at the top of the tree. There are a lot of apples. On the right half of the tree at the top, there's very few apples. Now below the tree to the left and to the right, there are two individuals that are holding both of their arms out. Uh, in an attempt to catch fruit. On the left, there is an apple falling out of the tree that will presumably fall into the arms of the person beneath it. On the right, there is nothing falling out of the tree and the individual has a question mark above the head. Now, inequality is pretty self-explanatory, um, but to be explicit, um, in this case, one person is reaping all the benefits of the fruit falling from the tree while the other person is getting little to none of it. Now in the bottom left quadrant, equality with the question mark is in both texts and it is subtitled evenly distributed tools and assistance. Now keeping the previous image description in mind, there are a few changes here. There are now two uh, equally sized ladder to the left and the right of the tree and the individuals are standing on top of the ladder and they both have side bags that they're using to store the fruit. Now on the left, the ladder is tall enough to have the person reach into the tree and pull the fruit and put it into the bag. Now for the person on the right, even though the ladder is on the same height, because of that lean in the tree, they can't reach into it to get the fruit to put it in the bag and they have an exclamation mark of surprise above their head. Now, Equality is equal tooling and assistance. This does not take in consideration 
the varying needs of different communities and the fact that the system is making it harder for them to get, gain access to the resources that they need. Now, the top rate quadrant, equity, is in bold text, and it's subtitled Custom Tools that Identify and Address Inequality. Now, the key difference here is that the person on the right, their ladder is now much taller, and they're now able to get into the tree and harvest fruit into their side bag. Now, equity is about providing appropriate tools of access to resources, but systemically, there may still be a lack of resources. And in this case, the right side of the tree at the top still has very little fruit in it. On the bottom right, justice is in bold text, and it is subtitled, Fixing the System to Offer Equal Access to Both Tools and Opportunities. Now, the two ladders here, one to the left and one to the right, are now at the same height again, with two people standing on top. The key difference here is that the tree is now straight up, and you see two pieces of wood planks that are propping up the tree to the left to help straighten it, as well as wire that is pointed down towards the right to help strain it as well. The other difference here is that the tree at the top has equally distributed apples, and both people are harvesting fruit from the tree. Now, here, justice is about fixing the system, and in this case, the crooked tree, such that everybody has equal access to the same amount of resources. So now that we have a better understanding of some of these terms, let's ask why justice matters over something like equity. When we are putting in solutions for barriers in the game, we're treating a symptom as opposed to the cause. Just like equality, while providing tools to gain access to resources, it does not mean that the resources are still equal. Like in the previous picture in the page, we'll remember that the apples were all still on one side of the tree. Justice means dealing with the problems that are caused by it and ism. And where accessibility work is involved, the root of the problems we face there is because of ableism. By taking a holistic approach and dealing with the problems at a systemic level and providing justice, you're going to improve access for many more people. So here are some examples where we can talk about doing the basic band-aid fixes for barriers versus solutions that may be addressing systemic issues. Keep in mind, all of these are still works in progress by the game development community. These are not necessarily the end-all solution for given problems, and there's just notable steps forward. One example would be subtitles in game to present dialogue to people who do not have audio on or cannot hear, which certainly addresses the problem. However, one underlying issue here with deaf players who happen to use sign languages is the pretty common fact that most sign languages, if not all, don't have a written form, and you'll often find that they must cross what is effectively a language divide to be able to read and understand the subtitles. So instead of focusing on just the audible portion of the problem, focusing on the language portion of the problem addresses what is an access barrier in a more equitable way for those who may not be able to read in the text language. But it also prevents, provides them access to the audio that's in the game as well. Another example would be the evolution from basic compliance of having um, menu navigation narration for games and moving towards full narration of games. Now, this is definitely still a work in progress in ensuring full equitable access to information and experiences in games, but there have been major advancements in the last few years. There's been innovation recently in the area of communication options, where people have looked at different options um, and approaching some of the fundamental problems with communication to multiplayer games. Um, a good example of this would be uh, Apex and the ping tool. That tool eliminates the need to have a clunky user experience between voice and text, where you have to implement text-to-speech or speech-to-text, 
and worry about the fidelity and the accuracy of that, the paint tool provides and addresses a more systemic issue by providing both the visual and the audible portion of the prompt that anybody happens to be using the tool and eliminates the need for an awkward user experience. So let's first talk about game developers, what you can do from both the work side of things as well as the individual side of things. So let's first talk about the work. Uh, look at your own processes and tools that are used. Consider where the processes may be reinforcing systemic problems. For example, are you frequently treating accessibility requests as a lower priority work item, even if you eventually end up doing them, uh, than other work items? Um, are your tools making adding narrator text to UI unwieldy, leading to a cycle of frustration and slow turnaround by developers? Um, sometimes we can over-engineer the processes here, and simpler may be better. Are some of the design patterns being used inherently flawed? Uh, we need sometimes to take a step back and look at whether what we've been taught is based on a flawed system or upon bad assumptions. Um, a good example of questionable design would be color filter to address colorblind barriers in games. There are sometimes solutions that the industry has converged on that are not the best solution. Don't be afraid to do research to see if there are other options or ideas that may work better. It's going to take a lot of time to enact all these changes and a lot of effort from everyone involved in this work at all levels in your organization. This kind of work takes a lifetime and it never really ends as we all evolve as people. It is important to call out here that you can't just expect to pull someone in at the end of your project new launch and expect them to be able to fix all of your problems. This is a reinforcement of the system that is putting them at a disadvantage in the first place. If the systemic issues are not addressed at the beginning, then you will reinforce those in your games either consciously or otherwise. People say that nobody cares about equity until it becomes their problem. Don't be one of those people. We will fuck up. It's inevitable. The important thing to remember is to take responsibility, learn from your mistakes, and do better next time. Now let's talk about what you can do. It is important to understand that making changes may lead to some deeply uncomfortable realizations and conversations with your peers. Discomfort as part of social justice work is normal. Remember to acknowledge the discomfort and use it as a tool to reflect and unpack your biases, assumptions, or any top behavior as part of your learning. You will always need to be teaching yourself and learning about the different issues the community face. It is a warning for me to not lay the burden of education on the community and instead bear the burden of learning yourself wherever possible. It is okay to not know the answer. I know I don't sometimes, and not everything will have a clear and immediate answer. What is important is to take the journey towards understanding. All of this work cannot happen in isolation. You must engage with the entire community to understand the issues before you can properly begin to approach the problem. You will not know what you don't know, so it is especially important here that the community be involved with any work that attempts to address their issues. Now, let's go to the other side of the equation uh, for those who consult and advocate within this space. Now, as consultants and advocates, we are not exempt from doing the work. We need to be aware of our own communities that we are representing and ensuring that we understand what the community wants and reflect that accurately. These evolve and change over time, and we should also have a good idea of the full spectrum of experiences within the community. We need to look at our own community traumas to better understand how we can respond to those in the future if we are asked how to address them. We have our own internalized biases that we've been taught 
learn either from inside or outside of the community and we need to be aware of those so we really don't let those leak into the work that we do. It is important to remember that we educate people. We don't mandate them to do things. At the end of the day, we have the right to make statements about what will or won't work for us, but it is a community of people that needs to make the decision, not one single person. I know I get quite annoyed when people try to speak on my behalf. Just like I mentioned about being a community of people, what works for you does not necessarily work for all, and you will oftentimes need to remind the people that you work with of this fact to ensure proper consideration is given. We need to resist the temptation to advise on areas outside our expertise or domain knowledge. I know we all want to help each other, but as the saying goes, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. So when you are asked about topics that do not pertain directly to your area of expertise, try cautiously and make it clear that asking someone else may be necessary. You're not exempt from self-care either. Being an advocate or a consultant is exhausting work, and it does take a community to do this work, so you cannot and you should not expect to solve the world's problems by yourself and burn out because of it. Find the people who do the work, as you, same work as you, and build your bridges with them. These people will be invaluable when you need the support after a particularly trying day and can also understand the shared struggle. When the time comes that you will need to step back or take a break, you will know who can do the work and share the mantle of labor. Here are some pitfalls to be aware of um, or to avoid. One of the more complex topics than justice is around intersectionality. For those of you who may be new to that term, intersectionality realizes and recognizes that we all have different identities that impact us differently. Our experiences are not a monolith and you should take care not to reduce us to one. A lot of us have heard the term safe space when having these types of learnings or conversations. However, there is a major pitfall here. I must pose the following question to you. Does the concept of a safe space exist? It may exist in some respects, but it is important to acknowledge, like I mentioned earlier, that these are things that sometimes are deeply uncomfortable to confront. The discomfort will negate the principle of a safe space, so it's important to be sure to not weaponize a safe space to avoid confronting the issues. Tone policing also falls under uh, this type of category. Remember that sometimes anger is an appropriate form of expression. However, it's also important to remember the paradox of tolerance. Tolerance is not a given. It is a peak treaty and you should treat it as such. One important exercise that I ask people to do is to avoid using the word but. But using in the statement as a rebuttal and a dismissal of what someone is trying to tell you. I'm not saying that you can't use the word, but I'm instead asking you to reflect why you might be potentially dismissing a comment someone has made before responding as an exercise to ensure that you're thinking through your response, to make sure you heard them, and that you're understanding the other person. Impact versus intent is an important point to cover. When someone might be upset in response to something I or you did, it is important to remember that your intent at that point no longer matters. There was a real impact to whoever may be involved, and we need to acknowledge that and understand the other person's perspective to learn how to move forward. Perfection is also not an attainable goal. Do not let this ideal distract you from doing the work. Progress is important, and it cannot be held back due to perfection. As an idea, it does not exist, and needs will vary, and it is not possible to meet everyone's needs at one time. In the end, I think it is better to make some progress than none. We've all probably heard this one before, but it bears repeating. Compliant is not accessible. 
it is also not just. We must remember that the systems that are causing the problems are the ones that are putting in place regulations that deem what is good enough, but does not actually create a just system. You will also frequently find that they do not necessarily look to the community to decide what is necessary. Here's a very short list of some related reading and videos to watch on uh, the subject. Uh, I will make sure that this is shared in both the Discord channel for this talk as well as the YouTube description. Uh, so if you are interested in, in uh, any of these resources, please take a look at either one of those two for ease of access. Through all of this, keep in mind that this is not a one and done thing. Like this picture here of a small plant growing from a dead tree trunk, we will always be growing and learning as humans, and if we are seeking out other perspectives and learning from people, we can strive to be better to our fellow humans. At the end of the day, conversation is part of justice, and I welcome you to join. Thank you.